Speaker Pelosi agrees that the time has come to stand and fight to raise the top tax bracket, but that strategy is also now being attacked from the left. It's a purely symbolic vote that will fail, writes Jane Hampshire of FireDogLake.com. Hampshire goes on to say, this isn't leadership, it's complete abdication of any sense of responsibility toward those you are elected to serve. Now is not the time for political theater. It's time to get in there, roll up your sleeves, and get the best deal you can to help the greatest number of people. Time to play serious, hard politics, not put on some cheap performance before you exit stage left. Joining me now are Jane Hampshire, the founder of the progressive blog, FireDogLake.com, and Adam Green, co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Adam, you've been on this show literally more than anyone except me. So we're going to let Jane Hampshire go first uh, tonight on this, and <laughs> especially, Jane, because you're taking a view uh, that, that is unusual, I think, in the, in the, on the left side of the blogosphere. Uh, you're very, very critical of, of Nancy Pelosi's uh, strategy on this and on her strategy strategies in the past on cap and trade, for example, you said that she made uh, Democrats in the House walk the plank on cap and trade for no reason since it wasn't going to go anywhere. Uh, why shouldn't Nancy Pelosi bring to a vote in the House uh, the issue of extending the Bush tax rates for everyone except the top tax bracket? Well, first of all, I want to thank Adam for letting me come on his show tonight. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to say that I actually love Adam's ad. And I don't think that we're in as much disagreement as it might seem. What Adam is saying is Obama needs to lead on this. The president needs to lead. And he needs to be out there saying, I will veto any bill that comes across my desk that doesn't meet this criteria. But he's not. And so what I'm writing about is what happens if oh, the president won't show that leadership. He's pretty much said he'll sign anything that the Republicans send him in January. And that really collapses the Democrats' hand. So what do you do at that point? Well, I don't think that taking a symbolic vote that doesn't have any chance of passing is the best thing for Nancy Pelosi to be doing right now. I think that that is just putting on a show like it was in 2007 when the Democrats were saying, oh, we'll put cots in the Senate to try and end the Iraq war. Well, it was just something to try and keep the base appeased, and we're still in Iraq. It's not the time for that right now. This is going to hurt Democrats if they have to take this vote in many districts mm -hmm. next time, and it doesn't go anywhere. The president drops them on it in January. If she wants to to lead, lead by calling the president out. Call the Senate Democrats out. Make them fight, but really fight. Don't put on a show fight. Adam, uh, Jane makes the point in, in her piece that uh, Nancy Pelosi has done a lot of this kind of uh, kabuki theater. Uh, I would submit to you that the whole uh, presentation of how the House was absolutely no question about it going to have the public option in the health care bill no matter what, something Nancy Pelosi said endlessly for months was never true. Uh, but it does seem to appease every Everything she says in that direction, as Jane points out, does seem to appease uh, the, the left side of the blogosphere, especially on these things. Uh, do, you, do you think that it makes sense to try to go forward in the House with a vote that clearly has absolutely no chance of making it through the Senate? Well, I'm not so sure folks are appeased or tricks when, as Jane says, Democratic leaders pretend to fight instead of actually fighting. I mean, here's what real fighting would look like. It would be saying we're going to have one vote and one vote only on tax cuts, and we dare the Republicans to vote against it. And if they don't, there will be real consequences. For President Obama, that means he would be willing to use the full bully pulpit of his office to travel to states like Maine, a state that he won by 18 points, to pressure Olympia Snow. He would use his grassroots army at Organizing for America to bring the hammer down on Republicans. And he would personally be calling Democratic leaders, telling them where he stands, and publicly promising to hold Republicans accountable. If that was true, then when this vote happened tomorrow, it wouldn't just be kabuki theater. It would be a real deal. It would be the one vote, and we'd see where the chips fall. But well, unfortunately, we haven't seen that kind of resolve from leaders. Uh, but, but Adam, I got to tell you, my experience working in the Senate with Republicans on tax issues is they want very much to be held accountable for a vote that uh, that does not deliver tax cuts to everyone. They were. It seems to me they would be happy to take that vote. But Jane, get jump in here. What do you think of the strategy Adam just outlined? I love it. I think it's perfect. But it requires leadership at the top. 
And that's what's missing. You shouldn't force members of the House out there, the soldiers. You shouldn't fire at the, on the soldiers in the, in the, you know, on your own troops and force them out into the field because the generals are not out there. It's not fair to the members of the House to force them to do this, to play this charade. You should really be calling out the people who are responsible. Because, because Jane, what you're saying is the president wouldn't do what Adam is saying the president would then have to do in order to follow up with that kind of strategy. The president has already said he will sign whatever they send him because his first priority is to get middle class tax cuts. I mean, everybody knows that he's going to do this, and that collapses the Democrats' hands. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the last 17 days that they have to do anything. And we've got a country where there are two million people who are set to lose their unemployment benefits by the end of the year. This Christmas time, there are people who can't feed their kids. For the love of God, show some leadership. Do something about this. This isn't a situation where people care about your cheap political theatrics and who's, what party is going to get the one up on each other. It's not the time for symbolic votes. It's the time for real leadership, and nobody is showing it. Adam Green, if, if it was possible to make a deal with the Republicans tonight to uh, give them what they want on the tax brackets, at least temporarily for the next uh, year, two years, in order to get an emergency extension of unemployment benefits, would you make that deal? Look, I think that it is not walking the plank for Democrats to fight hard on either the tax cut question or the unemployment benefits question. These are both huge political winners for Democrats if they are willing to fight and make the public case. So I would say put them together, uh, t take votes separately, but do not cave to Republican demands that we borrow money to give tax cuts to the rich, um, especially when we're not willing to borrow money to extend unemployment benefits. Have the fight. Hold them accountable. Go balls to the wall if we must. Do anything we need to, and and you know we will win in the end. But if you essentially say from the beginning we will compromise, we will not fight. That essentially invites the Republican just to just walk all over you, and that's that's what we've seen from the Democratic Party. It's unacceptable. Well, I think that's where the agreement exists between you and Jane. If you don't announce your compromising positions at the outset, Jane Hampshire and Adam Green, thank you both for your time tonight. Thank you. Thanks.